Beastars is one of the most interesting anime I've ever seen, and no, not just in terms of surface finish. It tells a story that incorporates a lot of lesser covered issues in the world of anime and provides some representation where there was less before, in addition to providing a fitting and relevant commentary to most of us today. Although it certainly gets a bit more ludicrous later on, this realistic introduction and later ridiculous nature creates something very worth a watch. So a quick theme and plot synopsis. The Beastars world consists of two groups, herbivores and carnivores. While a majority of society has come together with carnivores eating meat supplements like eggs, there still exists a dark corner of intentional and unintentional predation. Instincts are hard to ignore, and this is seen clearly in many of the carnivores who live with their predator side waiting to be unlocked at a moment's notice. One slip and they could not just kill another, but lose everything themselves. It's a duality that looks at prejudice for the weak and strong, and how that can be overcome. Specifically through a mismatched pair of Dwarf Rabbit and Grey Wolf, Haru and Legashi. The story starts after a murder on their campus, and follows their budding relationship through its start of interest, prior complication, and eventual blossoming as they maintain their extracurriculars at Cherryton Academy. Let's start with that surface finish I mentioned though. Now, Beastars is downright stunning, and shows just how well 3D can be used in anime. It provides an extra layer of dynamic feel, where even simple actions give you something to focus on. Plus, it has some guts to try less traditional or prolonged shots, as sometimes even both at once. While a couple of these don't work as well as others, the action is often presented in a way to reflect the emotions of the scene with subtle notes, like presenting Legacy further away in the split screen, in a section where Louis is already showing control over the moment. This furthering of scenes is extraordinary, and one of the few times we get to see it in anime. In the same vein, I could mention the soundtrack, but with limited time available, I'll leave that for you to discover, as it's similarly great. Now we can get to the meat of the show, pun intended, and what made me really fall for it early on. Although it does have a bit of that high school relatable feel, there's more under the surface and a lot to unpack. Now let's be real talking about anime. Most of them will play sex off as either a joke or a simple way to draw in viewers. But it's a very personal thing that could be anywhere from amazing to downright terrible for your psyche. Now, trust me, I've seen both of those ends in my life. And we can see the same thing from Haru in a very realistic and complex way. As a dwarf rabbit, her small stature has always afforded her interest from others in ill-intentioned ways. Men who seek to protect her in either doubt for her abilities or as an attempt to court her, and the attention of predators who see her as an easy or pure target. Because of this, she's almost never been treated as an equal or even as anything more than a child, until she has someone express a physical interest in her. This serves as the first time she's able to be something more than a helpless runt to someone, and she continues to use sex as a way to be liberated in that sense. Even when it garners her a reputation as the school slut, the wrath of overt bullies, and the affection of someone who can't love her back. It's not played entirely as a joke, and also doesn't serve as some simple shock value either. It's just real. Throughout the anime, we see Haru cope with the downfalls of her only way to feel like a real person, and it hits in a way that anime never has before. In a similar style, we can also look at Legacy, who provides a look at a different, but still realistic take that's deeply personal to yours truly. Not just is he a grey wolf, but a 6'4 grey wolf, just an inch under me. As an inherently powerful carnivore, he struggles to keep his instincts in check. He could overpower anyone around him, and in a world under fresh scars of carnivore herbivore relations, this puts a target on his back as a threat. So he does everything he can to dissuade this, keeping his interactions to a minimum, slouching to lower his stature, and avoiding true conflict with others. It all allows him to skirt by as a loner, but not for free. His mental state is deeply affected, dropping him into a depression and drawing the ire of his classmates who hate his lack of embrace for his carnivorous self. He eventually feels the start of change, but ends up mentally back to square one, in that realistic way where the bad is easier to see than the good, and only you'd say that you haven't changed. He's shy, awkward, lanky, and helpless, but more than that, he forces himself to be those things, for everyone's sake. And it's very real to do those things. Now, I wasn't at risk of killing someone if I was myself, but in high school I presented myself in the same way because people had told me directly I was scary and asked me why I got held back since that must be the only way I was so much larger. I was shy, awkward, lanky, and helpless, and have never related more to a character than him. His struggles are also presented more truly in the fact that some others just give in to their instincts without regard for the moral peril it presents. He's trying his hardest to maintain, and they just let go, presenting him as the true moral lead, a very well done aspect of the anime. 
but for how realistically flawed him and Haru are, they're equally likable in an inverse way. Haru breaks out the feist on certain occasions, making you root for her to break the mold, and Legashi evokes the strongest I must protect best boy ever, despite his contrasting stature. And together they provide that barrier breaking aspect, but again not in a simple way. Things don't just work out immediately, and they each have to handle their own issues before things can be truly healthy for them. Their lives aren't terrible, but they're not good either. And they don't magically get good and turn them positive once things work out. A refreshing take that provides a new look at prejudice through individually intertwining stories that often serves as an ill-managed backdrop to media, in addition to presenting life in a way that's true to us, even when it enters some out there territory. Hey there, thanks for watching. Leave a like or a comment if you liked the video to let me know to make more in the future. Also, if you're new, consider subscribing for more anime content like the videos on screen right now. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope I'll see you again soon.